Hey, welcome back. You're with Goliath Tech. My name is Kyler. And I'm Dante. And we're going to be showing you a bunch of different jobs. We're moving from north to south, about 100 miles, and we're going to be going through about four to five different jobs, showing you how the helical piles are underneath completed jobs. Let's get it. We're going to be heading out all the way out there. There's two gazebos, and then that's where the piles are installed. Basically, we just drove our excavators down the trail all the way out into the marshes, and that's where we installed for the, the, the boardwalk. The board that's what the word is. Yeah, thank you. This is the wet and wild trail. Upper loop. Uh, yeah, this is a little further than I was expecting. This goes for miles. I don't want to walk this. No, it goes for half of a mile. Uh, <laughs> This is our boardwalk that is perfectly straight, 150 feet. It's a nice. great job. Yeah, looks good. I think I can jump on it. It's not going anywhere. It's pretty sturdy. I'm flying, Jack. <laughs> My name is Kyler. I'm Dante. And we installed helical piles for this boardwalk here at the Bear River Bird Refuge in Brigham City. So we uh, installed the helical piles underneath this boardwalk because it's more environmentally friendly for the bird refuge that we're at. So instead of being able to pour concrete into the water, that's not really an option. So they had us come in, we screw the piles in with our excavator, and we don't have to worry about any load or problems or anything like that um, using helical piles. It's nice as underneath all of this boardwalk here is water, and using helical piles, we're able to just go right through it and keep on moving all the way through the whole entire boardwalk. And we installed roughly 100 here, so you got your, you got your depth and you got your load capacity to be able to hold up, obviously hold the weight of this boardwalk and anybody who walks over it. So you are good there and not gonna have any issues. Yeah, so some of the problems that we get installing helical piles in the water here is you don't wanna stand in the water in the swamp, so you have to bring out um, paddle boards, kayaks, anything you can use and then getting the excavator through the marshiness. Sometimes they want to get stuck, so you might have to use a second machine to keep track to make sure it's not going to sink into the mud or anything. But with this project, it didn't take very long for us. We were able to just install and then just back up as we went. So we started on one end, and we just did one on either side, and then just backed all the way up, all the way to the other side of the bridge. Installing with the helical piles here, they wouldn't be possible using any other sort of footing foundation application because of the water, the way that the city has the bird refuge set up and the fact that we don't want to disturb any of the birds or the fish that's in the water. So since we just drive the little pile into the ground, it's just a small galvanized steel cylinder and that galvanization on it won't rust or anything and it can last many, many years. All right, so next we are going to be heading to a job called Collier's where we had to install helical piers into a wall. Yeah. Mm, you want to do it horizontally. Horizontally. Yeah. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. So next we're headed to Collier's where we installed helical piles horizontally into the wall. For a retaining for wall. For a retaining wall. I'll just say horizontally. <laughs> horizontally. <laughs> I'm always good at that word until now. <laughs> there it takes a term. All right. I'm here for it. Next we'll be heading to a job called Collier's where we installed helical piers horizontally. So let's go check it out. I did the thumbs up. Yeah. Too out. many thumbs up. You know what I mean? Up, right? it's, it, it's the cheesiness of it, right? <laughs> I forgot the freaking retaining wall part. I just realized that. We'll explain that when we get there. So we just got here to Collier's. I'm going to go show you what it looks like now that it's finished, and we'll explain kind of how the process went um, as we installed the piles into the wall. So you can see there's this wall here, and then there's a second wall behind the apartments that they're building right now. So basically this whole entire mountainside is just sliding down and they needed some way to keep that mountain from falling into their the houses they're building. So what we did is we installed about 183 helical piles into the wall um, sideways. So what we did is we lift the drill up, lift the pile up, and then we screwed them in sideways. That way we can tie back the concrete from ever falling forward again. So each of the piles is about 21 feet deep into the ground going that way. So if you can imagine this wall here, you have basically sticks going all the way back into the wall, 21 feet. Then you have like 70 on this wall and then another 80 or so on the other wall back there. So with this wall here, what we did is we used rebar heads 
um, on top of the piles, kind of like what you do for a house foundation. But since they're sideways, they can tie their rebar in, then they shotcrete the concrete on top of it, and so it ties it all together. So this whole wall is held by helical piles deep into the mountain. Um, this is important, it kind of helps the builder and the contractor so they're able to use this land to build on instead of just have a wall that, or a mountain that's just always sliding down on them. Now they can build all these extra buildings and houses for them and uh, saves them a lot of money in the long run. The soil is really bad on top of this, this mountain here. And so it was just like, even when we were trying to cut the wall flat so we could install, see how it's like nice and flat here? Even just trying to get the wall excavated flat enough to where we could install it into the wall, it was just crumbling away as soon as we'd go to do it. Um, same when we would install, it was very rocky. We'd install the pile and part of the wall would kind of fall out on us and we'd install and part of the wall would fall out on us. And so we had to continue to adjust for the situation as it was going on. Yeah, so like on this particular job, it was best we had multiple guys and multiple crews here and multiple guys actually guiding a pile into the wall because if we just you know, stuck it there, it just kept falling. So we had to have one, like two guys on one side, two on the other actually holding it while we get the first parts of drilling going just to get it started. So next we'll be heading out to Roy for a deck king's job and just a standard deck to see our helical piers in the ground. Yeah, so that's nice because they were here filming when we first installed. Now that the deck is built, we can go and look and see what it looks like now that it's finished and be able to kind of get an overall picture of what it looks like when it's done. So this is our deck. We installed the piles for this job here, so let's take a look. So as you can see here, this is a basic six by six beam going in our six inch saddle back bracket. They uh, secure these by putting screws on each side of the six inch bracket. That way they can be safely secure. And yeah, you can see where we installed every pile here. Even these ones here in their core cut. You see they perfectly went in. Everything looks nice and level. It's nice they're able to run these straight beams going all the way down and across, so it looks good. For most decks, you're typically seeing a concrete footing being used for individual post beams. Our idea here is putting these in the ground instead of using any kind of concrete that way it makes it easier so we're not messing with the soil, we're not having to bring a concrete truck in, they pour, dig holes, these just screw right in, they put, place their beams, and it's just a much smoother process. And that, that way they're also able to keep their flower beds nice and use everything. They don't have to come back and do any yard work after work. So using helical piles, it's super nice for the contractors because we're able to come in and install all of these piles within one day, and then the next day they're instantly able to start building on top of the piles. So they've been building this deck for a couple of weeks now, they're almost finished here. Um, yeah, it's super nice because they're able to just instantly start, they don't have to wait a week for it to dry, they don't have to wait for anything to set. Um, it kind of helps speed up the process so they can do more decks. So the more decks you can do, the more money you can make, right? Yeah, so we're here working with Deck Kings right now. Um, they've been working with us for about five years. They always keep coming back to us, using us um, for all their jobs. It's nice because we have at least one to two jobs a week, especially come summertime. Um, we're able to install in the day, they're able to start building the next deck, and then we can just move on to their next project they have set up for them. And that speeds up the process a lot for both um, us and for the deck builders. Okay, so that is a wrap here in Roy. We'll now be heading out to Syracuse to see helical piles that we installed for a dock in water. Let's awesome. go. Let's do it. Okay, so we're here in Syracuse. We did piles for a, di a dock. You got your helical piers out in the water. We did probably about 10 of them for this specific job all along here to help support this dock and the roof above. Um, so let's take a look. We'll get closer. So here we have our helical pier that we installed in this water area here for this, for this beam. And on these, what's good about these going into water, they, ha they have galvanization on them, so you don't have to deal with coming out here and looking at them rusting over time. For this specific job, we were able to figure out problems as if how you can install in water with, we have to use spotters and have someone on a machine up on land. So we were able for this job to use a paddle board 
and me specifically standing on it and being able to spot why directing my installer of where the pile to go. We were able to keep our pile on lasers and watch it. I also even at one point strapped myself from the paddle board around our pile on to stay close to it so I can watch our level and our lasers at all times as it's going down in the water. So what you got here with these piles, they are supporting these steel I-beams up above to where they just, instead of like a, a normal like six by six post like this going into it, they are bracing these I-beams going straight out and they are able to hold up the weight and the capacity of the dock including the roof. On this dock here, you can see that they're using cement pillars um, underneath their dock versus the one next door that we're using helical piles. And there's a couple differences. Obviously, this is much larger and a little bit uglier than what a small helical pile looks like. But also, when they do their um, cement pillars here, they just slide the form down and then they just pour concrete in there. And the problem with that is you don't actually know the load capacity of that cement pillar. With a helical pile, you install it using a PSI gauge, and I can tell you exactly how much load each pile is going to hold. So this pile will hold 10,000 pounds, this one will hold 15,000. Where with this, you just pour in concrete into a tube and then hoping in the future that it's going to hold and it's not going to sink or wear out on you. So a couple more amazing reasons to use helical piers is because um, it's a little bit less labor intensive versus using the cement ones like we were showing you on the other dock. Because when we go to install, it only takes us about 20 minutes. We go in, we set up with a spotter on a paddle board, and then we just screw it into the ground and right through the water. Or with theirs, they have to form it up, figure out how they're going to dig out underneath the water, of course, and then have to bring in a concrete truck and pour their concrete in. That takes several days, especially time for the concrete to dry. But for us, we screw the pile into the ground, put a base plate on. They're able to drop their I-beam and bolt their I-beam with these bolts onto the the plate that's um, on the pile, and they're able to level it and make sure everything's set perfectly. And it kind of saves them a lot of time in the future. Another nice thing that's um, nice about this job is it took us about 15, maybe 20 piles to complete the whole entire dock. That's actually the owner right there driving his boat, um, going around. But uh, yeah, so it took us about 15 to 20 piles to install. It only took us a day. So we were in and out of this job within a day and now they're already building it. They're almost completed and they'll be able to have another boat parked here in their dock. So we're here at uh, Tracy Aviary. We're kind of coming in right as they're closing, so we're gonna have to rush a little bit to show you guys this. Um, we won't have time to stop and look at all the pretty birds, but I'm gonna show you a couple different types of projects that we did in the same location. Um, starting off, we used helical piles with rebar heads on top and they were able to build out their concrete pad. And then once the concrete pad was done, we were able to hang over the edge of the concrete and install the helical piles into the water. So it's actually just right here in front of us. So this pad with the light pole, all that concrete has helical piles underneath it. And then this deck here you can see off to the right is going out into the water up to 14 feet out into the water um, with helical piers underneath it. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so underneath uh, this water is, they had a concrete riverbed or I guess it was like kind of like a lake. Um, they weren't able to drain it because for some reason the water that's free flowing over that rock, it just, it won't stop flowing now. So they weren't able to drain it, so they were never able to do anything else besides helical piers here. So we ended up doing, we came with the excavator with a jackhammer attachment. We jackhammered the concrete at the bottom, and then we had a guy on a paddle board sitting out on the water, and then he was able to spot me. I was able to hang over the edge and drill into the water with the helical piers. Obviously you can't pour concrete into the water very easily, and so helical piles are ideal for decks and installing into the water. Plus the galvanization on the helical pile will keep it from ever rusting in the future. This is kind of what it looks like, it's beautiful. Well, thanks for watching um, this video. We've gone through all these different types of projects and jobs. We've been able to show you so many different applications for the helical pier, and I uh, hope to see you guys soon. Helical piles for the win. Yep. Yo, buddy, Nux, don't leave me hanging. Yeah, let's go home. Let's, yeah, do, let's it. do this. Good stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. It's freaking spring. This summer's coming. There's gonna be a lot more jobs.